Hello again and welcome back to Yosemite Valley Zoo. Hopefully, first of all, uh, I hope this uh, episode reads you well because yesterday's episode, or the one on Saturday, seems to be somehow hidden in YouTube for whatever reason. Uh, YouTube decided to kind of not push this out to many, many people, um, which, uh, yeah, led into weird situations that even people asked me if I missed out on the episode and I was like, no, it's online though. Um, and I could actually also see that in, in many other things, uh, some kind of stuff like the interaction and stuff. Just falling into, uh, the, you know, with the door into the house, if that's even an English saying, uh, because there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to talk about with you guys in today's episode. So it's, first of all, we get a lot more done than the last one, I promise this. Um, and we are having the animal in today's episode while we have Monday. And Monday is a day where I usually, you know, don't upload something like special in that kind of sense, because Monday is most likely the day where, um, the weekend is over and I get back to my normal job and I just want to have this day for the evening stream and here's me again uh, telling you that tonight, maybe this is also the reason why the YouTube video was hidden away because I, I used that wrong word of, of this different platform, you know. So tonight I'm going to live stream again Planet Zoo. I'm going to live stream uh, this wonderful park over here and if you guys want to be part of it, um, make sure to tune in around 11 p.m. Central European time. I have to say it's that late today because maybe a bit earlier, but I'm gonna see, um, because my wife is at home and I need to figure out some stuff because I'll, I'll be leaving town for a few days here. Um, so I need to prepare some stuff in advance. I must say I haven't done anything. I just took the week weekend off of doing YouTube. I just had my Christmas party from work, which is... Um, very early on this year, several reasons uh, led to this, but uh, it was fun, so I needed one day to recover, because obviously I drank a lot more milk than usually, and, you know, I've got a heavy stomach from drinking milk, so um, that's why Saturday was more like a recovery day, and today I've been uh, also working, so, for my actual job, so that's mainly why, and also just chilling a bit more and relaxing, so, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, this ended up uh, having less... Yeah, stuff prepared, but uh, I told you in the last episode already about my Christmas party because of the voice. You can hear it's better. It's not perfect yet, but uh, yeah, here we go. Now, in today's episode, and uh, people wanted this, I uh, checked, first of all, the Zoopedia before I decided on going with an animal here. Now, many, many people suggested great ideas about animals in the future. This one over here is not going to be the most ridiculous and crazy habitat, but this is one of the first habitats that are in the zoo. And now this is going to be a bit more interesting in terms of explaining where this project is going. So I don't want to restrict myself to only animals that live in the region. And there have been a lot of comments about the bisons being actually not located at the Yosemite National Park. They are more in the Yellowstone National Park and even Americans seem to um, switcheroo, swapperoo, swapperoo, I should say, um, this a little bit and they seem to confuse it. But I must say that I, I did some research on that and it seems that they kind of are home there in this area, but they tend to be more likely in the uh, Yellowstone National Park and you can find greater herds over there. But still, if my research is Correct. There are some bisons living in the Yosemite National Park still, but not, you know, as common as in the Yellowstone, for example. Now, again, the idea is not to only include animals that live in that area, because then I would go into some serious issues quite quickly, um, because the, there are only so many animals in that game we can use, and uh, these being named are uh, the ones we had already talked about, which are the wolves and uh, the bisons, for example, and maybe the grizzly bears and the farmers and black bear would also work, even though that the game version is more like the Asian version of it. Um, so while the same, like the black bear in the US and, and kind of in the park looks pretty similar to the one we have in the game, even though if I did my research co correctly, the farmers and one we have is more likely the Asian version of it. So it still does fit, I guess, but uh, correctly, it's the Asian version. However, um, these are the ones that are definitely going to go into the zoo and they will feature definitely more likely the very, very natural habitats. And the, by, by saying so, I mean, the bison one is pretty impressive in terms of Actually, it could 
be kind of the natural environment and not in in the zoo you know it's not part of the actual zoo so i love this idea that much that i kind of i think we succeeded in having this so the idea about the next ones is kind of making them more likely being a habitat so we don't want to have for example as all of your stories were suggesting in the comments down below um you don't want to have that many grizzly bears and that many uh, wolves roaming around here because they do um yeah, do some bad stuff to the people living around. So it might be pretty cool if the zoo can, you know, can house them all. So it might make sense to to have like a kind of closed off area for them and uh, still making it appear as if they would live in the free world. So that's kind of something I'm looking into to do in the future. However, now I do want to have a lot more animals in the zoo. I also want to have like camels over here because no zoo without camels, right? I also want to have like pandas, for example, and some other climbing animals. I want to have the primates in here. I want to have um, the wonderful fluffy lemurs in. So there are quite some decisions we need to take uh, before we can move on. But the one decision I want to make is I want to not limit myself to animals that only live in this area. I want to make it as realistic as possible that we do try to stick to uh, local foliage as much, much as we can um, and that we can also, you know, use heaters and stuff to our advantage in, in you know, where we need it. So that would be pretty cool. But after all, that's still being a sandbox which is aiming to be as realistic as possible but yet not tie us down to you know a realism aspect that kind of slows us down in, into doing creative and good stuff so I think that's the best compromise for the moment being and I can just ensure you that in the future I will go into both other ways I will go into way more creative outlets that kind of have no limit at all where I don't really care about realism and at the other hand side I do have already some stuff planned uh, secretly and which is way more into the very very realistic approach of zoos like very like super crazy um, I don't want to over promise here because some other gems out there are doing incredible stuff and I don't want to say it would be any better or whatnot it's just a bit different so the approach on that is different but that'll be going to be some kind of stuff in the future now as I put down the habitat gate in a little bit of a different way this time I want to talk about this habitat in particular now I gave you the backside story and the background story why I did it the way it is um, and I put down this restaurant to give me some kind of hint where I want to have the food court area over here because this will be the segue into tonight's stream where I'm focusing for Wednesday on the backstage area which is going to be here which also still has a restaurant on the opposite side of it. Now we are working on the pronghorn antelope habitat. Now this lovely animal, I have to say it looks awesome, I love this animal a lot because it's it's some kind of, um, you know, if, if I would talk about deers, for example, um, it might be potentially the same way as if Americans talk about the pronghorn. Because it's kind of common and it also lives in the United States. However, it does not really live in this area around here. So I, I felt like it wouldn't make too much sense to uh, include another, another just like off habitat that is not part of the actual zoo I wanted to have this habitat being part of the zoo but I wanted to make it as natural as possible to be very organically integrated into this area I wanted to make this area feel more like a journey rather than a, a, a real habitat that you would kind of recognize as such so I wanted to make this whole thing be more part of what is the left hand side of the zoo which is uh, you know dragging you towards the bison um, yeah well I should call it habitat but it's basically the bison field or the bison viewing area I don't know and I wanted to include this area as much as possible very organically in here and I feel like at the end uh, you you can tell me else in the comments if you don't agree but I feel like it kind of worked out pretty well because I tried to mimic a little bit of a forest thing here I tried to mimic a little bit of a um, I called it pan but I guess it's, it's not really a pan I, I was going for more like a yeah a plane I guess um, but it's not it's like a little bit uh, lower down so I went for a pan which potentially you would all call trough I guess but I didn't even know what exactly is the English word for it the right one I mean both of them mean the right word in English but I think the translation does not work for all of them so what I was talking about is that this area is lowered down a little bit you have just very very slight incline towards a bit of a lowered area which makes 
um, up for a bit more privacy for our animals, but on the other hand side, which enables our guests to see the animals at all times. And yeah, I wanted to integrate it as, uh, yeah, as um, natural as possible. I was struggling a bit with the uh, natural habitat border over here with the null fence, um, mainly because I, uh, the, the perspective kind of is very weird indeed. It's, the perspective is some kind of, weird uh, you have to enable the or disable the um, uh, filter overlay definitely but you also have to disable the how's this even called again um i actually know but better you do enable a full kind of body fence first and then you just switch it to the null fence because else you don't really have an idea of high how high it is because these things just blend in and don't really work in the 3d environment which is down to the fact that they're just like layers i mean Anyways, that's just me being a bit weird here. You can see I'm dragging them now into the right position by just plopping down these things. And yeah, I was creating as much as I could some natural borders, as I said. And at this point, I wanted to use the advantage of the game that sometimes the calculation of game pieces uh, towards the huge barrier they create, um, I wanted to use it to my advantage. So what I'm doing over here now is to create a very very simple fence piece and I wanted to create this fence as natural and and clumsy looking as possible so it's it's just a very very rough fence model I was trying to to come up with some ideas for like screws and stuff and I couldn't really find too nice of piece to use so I ended up with a bit more of an iron bar version here as you can see now I'm using these iron iron grinders to kind of make them appear as if they were nailed into this kind of wooden piece but I only used them on the lower area because it didn't really fit into the higher ones because this this wooden piece which I do like a lot um, it, it kind of uh, emerges to the upside and just changes direction so this iron bar would have looked pretty weird um, but yeah you can definitely tell that this fence um, would in, in real like it, it wouldn't hold off the antelopes at all like they could easily go through there, just like crouch through there or whatever. So um, I, I still love this thing because it offers the guests a way better perspective into it. It makes the whole thing look a lot more natural and it doesn't destroy the natural look of this area in total. So still this little pond area here in front, which we made in the last episode, um, still has its, its right to exist and it's not destroyed by weird fencing and, and chain link fence that you don't want to see. and. Yeah, you know, all these kind of things and yeah. Now we are going in with a little bit of an experiment here. I'm using the boat now for something um, that I wanted to create to see how it looks. I feel like I, I'm happy with how it turned out in the end. I wanted to create a little bit of a wooden barrier that looks a bit more man-made rather than everything else natural in the end we have in this area. So I didn't want to do everything with uh, foliage and rocks. Uh, that makes uh, a whole lot of difference here. Now, um, also one thing I wanted to talk about, because so many people commented this under my videos, which is which is great, and I love this. Um, they were telling me to use the biomes instead of the uh, continents to look for the pieces, because then I would see the rocks, because I was complaining about the fact that the rocks are not integrated into the kind of, you know, areas where the animals come from. And now, here's me. Yes, I could use the biomes, but the problem is that the biome not necessarily has everything correctly. And it almost appears always that I have one or two trees in, in the game that I use that the animals don't like because they're from a different, it's from the right biome, but it's from a different continent. So they are, they are like, nah, I don't like it. Even though they, in real, they wouldn't even care about that, I guess. But as long as it's not toxic to them, I don't even know how much animals care at all. I mean, I, I can understand if they care having too many plants because it's just annoying, but I, the type of plant, I mean, it's good that it's in the game because it's, added, it's adding a very nice layer of uh, uh, of, of kind of management, but in, in total, I'm just like a bit confused. Like, would this animal actually notice that? However, now you can see, that's how this area turned out. I have to say, I hate the benches. I will definitely change them or cover them again. Uh, they don't really fit in. I, I just left them here to make sure that I have some fences there, uh, benches there and don't forget about them in the future. Um, I also planned, and this is something I I came across, like when we are reaching the 10 episodes, which is not that far away, I will make uh, one episode, which is not even part of it. I will call it some kind of guest flow or fixing my sandbox or whatever I'm going to call it. Um, I will 
go back and fix everything that is still needed to be fixed uh, in this first uh, 10 episodes time. Because if I don't do this, I will never do it and it will have the same stuff as I have at the moment with Napali. And uh, there's just so much that I don't want to go back at all. And yeah, well. Now, talking about this trough over here, I found it extremely hard to hide this away in, in natural stuff. Mainly because of these iron riders that go above uh, the trough itself. So I know that some of the zoo things do look this way. But I'm not entirely sold on the idea. Also, I figured that if you put down the bedding and you move it into the ground before you do it with the terrain, it doesn't work. But if you do the terrain manipulating later on, it does work. So whatever, I've hidden some of the bedding in there. And I was hoping that this will make up for the shelter for these animals. But it, uh, I can already spoiler you, it doesn't. So in the end, I will unfortunately end up doing a, well, it, it's kind of a temporary shelter thing. And I have to figure a way how I will make the real shelter because at the moment I'm not happy with it. Maybe I'm going to make like a little bit of a building that fits into the backstage area and yet is part of it. I don't know. It, it yeah. I, I don't even know if these animals really would need shelter because the as you can see, the, the trees seem not to provide too much shelter. So I was also thinking about into putting more trees in here. I wanted to leave it looking like that lush as it is right now. Um, but but it, it doesn't. So yeah, it's, I don't know, it's weird. So um, I wanted to keep it that way. But you can see, this is now the very simple design I'm going for just to make my animals happy. So they might eventually get babies. And as soon as they have, since we're in a sandbox, I'm just leaving it that way, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, for the moment, I, I think I go with that. I make it look very overgrown by all these plants to just make it look a bit more mossy. And uh, yeah, that's about it, just to give them some shelter and in the area where they need it. So yeah, that's about it. Now we are about to go into the cinematics here. And I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. While we have a pronghorn male pooping in the background. Hell, it wouldn't have been a Rudy episode without a pooping animal. Now, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this episode and you do appreciate the effort that I now made the switch of having animal related episodes on the weekend and the more backstage building episodes um, made to the middle of the week. Now, I cannot promise if I will be uploading on Wednesday because the stream and stuff and I have to see if I can record before I leave for a few days uh, out of town. So, yeah. Um, I hope you guys can give me a lot of feedback about this pronghorn habitat if you like it the way it is. And also, what kind of animals do we should we do next? Like a lot of people suggested to have the um, uh, to have the lemur um, together with the other like the red lemur in as a first habitat, which is in the middle. Or what else should we do? Anyways, as a small reminder, if you want to catch me live, I am live tonight on that other platform around 11 p.m. ish uh, Central European time. I would love to see you there. But until then, let me know all your feedback down below in the comments. Don't forget about creating stories and stuff. I'm more than happy to read them out every now and then. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a great time, guys. And bye-bye. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRandCamel. Also, big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean. Just uh, click that sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys.